Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we're gonna be getting all mineral oiled up because we're doing the world's first all Intel gaming mineral oil cooled gaming PC. I don't know why I try to drink that. Don't drink mineral oil. But what we have right here is a mineral oil PC, which it's been about a year since we've done our last one. And as always here on the Toasty Bros, we like to make mineral gaming PCs because I don't know, that's our thing. We like to do them. And we're gonna do a PC build using the Arc A750 that Intel was nice enough to send over. And we even got 13th gen Intel right here with this i3. But before we dive into this mineral oil PC, let's hear more from today's sponsor. Huge shout out to Enreal for sponsoring today's video. Are you looking for a new accessory that'll take your gaming experience to the next level? Look no further. Introducing Enreal Air AR Glasses, the perfect companion for your gaming. With Enreal Air, you can now enjoy your favorite games in a whole new dimension. The glasses can easily connect with Steam Deck, PS5, Switch, and Xbox. But the Enreal Air is not just for gaming. It can easily change the way you experience the world around you. Imagine watching your favorite movie on a 201 inch virtual screen while sitting in your living room or taking it with you wherever you go. With two 1080p Full HD Sony Micro OLED displays, you can now enjoy high quality video displays and audio cinematic experiences anywhere. The glasses have a sleek design and are super light around 80 grams, making it comfortable to wear for extended periods. Upgrade your 2D experience with Enreal Air. Take an IMAX screen in your pocket and enjoy limitless entertainment anywhere, anytime. Enreal Air is available for $379 and you can purchase the Enreal adapter separately for $59. Check out Enreal Air on Amazon and experience AR like never before. Thanks again to Enreal for sponsoring today's video. So as some of you may know, we have probably done five plus mineral oil cooled PCs here on the channel and one of our most popular videos with almost 4 million views that happened over eight years ago was a mineral cooled PC. So we're actually gonna be replacing the one that we have up front at PC Bros. We actually have it connected to our racing sim and it just has an 11 Gen i5 in it and that's just not good enough. So today we're gonna be really pushing the limits of our cooling capabilities using this 13 Gen i3 and this very nice Arc Intel card. Quick little lesson for those who have never seen a mineral oil PC. This is mineral oil. It's a non-conductive, well, liquid that makes it look like you're submerging your PC in water, but really it's mineral oil. It's not water. Do not put water in the tank and put your PC in it because it's not gonna work. <laughs> mineral oil though is a very slippery substance that is used for laxative purposes and cleaning purposes. Um, and uh, yeah, it works great for uh, doing these PCs. Do we recommend you do this at home? Probably not, yeah. but we'll explain more about the process as we dive into it. Let's do it. Are we gonna submerge a mineral oil? I'm glad that you asked because we're gonna speed run these parts. So we have the i3-13100F and this is a four core, eight threaded processor. And I think I, no, it's actually not an F. Oh. I wanted to have integrated graphics in case we ever need to take the GPU out. I forgot about that. Mm. It's a very smart thing to do at home. We have 16 gigs of silicon power and this is just DDR4. It's just some pretty basic RGB RAM. I wanted to go kind of fancy, but I also didn't want to spend tons of money since this stuff will probably not ever be reusable. And it's this tough B660M Gaming Plus and it does have Wi-Fi because we are gonna need Wi-Fi and Bluetooth because of where we're putting this mineral oil PC. We have Western Digital Black NVMe Gen 4 SSD. That's one terabyte Gen 4. I mean, that's gonna be fast, it's gonna be blazing, lots of space for all of our games, all of our racing games. We have the Arc A750, which is a awesome Intel card. And this is an eight gig card and it should perform like a, I think this one's like a 3060, right? Or a little under 3060. Yeah, yeah the new driver optimizations. Intel yeah. reached out to us and was like, hey, you want to take a look at the A750? And we're like, can we put in mineral oil? <laughs> and they did not seem to care. So you know what? Here we go. Yeah, definitely an interesting choice from Intel, but hey, that's why we love them. We're glad that they let us do this. Power supply is interesting. 450 watt SFX from FSP. You're probably thinking that's really low and yeah that is a pretty low wattage but it's kind of hard to find mini itx i say hard to find high wattage F sfx as we have a 1300 watt cooler master sfx but that did not exist before i promise <laughs> so yeah 450 watts it should be plenty for this but hey it'll be a fun test we'll see how many watts it really pulls and now as you can see there is a lot more stuff here like it doesn't even look like you could fit all this in this little five gallon tank but let's talk about it real quick so we have a 360 mil Corsair radiator that is not an AIO. It's just an open radiator for a custom loop. We're gonna be putting these SP120 fans on it that are all gonna to hook to a hub so that hopefully we can have all of our Corsair stuff synced because speaking of Corsair, we're gonna be we're gonna be replacing the LEDs that are in this lid, which normally would connect with a separate connector. And I'm gonna have Matt work on this because it's gonna be a fun little project. This is the Lighting Node Pro, which is basically their LED strips. It does come with another hub, but I'm gonna try to have everything hooked up to this one hub so that then all of our lights and our RAM and everything will kind of match. I really should have gotten Corsair RAM. I'd, what are you doing? What was I thinking? I don't freaking know. But yeah, that'll be pretty cool. Now, one thing we're gonna be doing totally different with this build is we're gonna be using these 80 mil Noctua fans 
fans. And what these are going to do is they're going to go on the lid. One's going to be intake and one's going to be exhaust. And the reason we're doing this is because once we put that lid over, the problem with mineral oil is a lot of people think this stuff must be so good for cooling, right? It is not. It is not good for cooling at all because it is very viscous. It holds on to heat really well. And also this case has no airflow. I mean, it's literally a closed sealed case because it's not supposed to leak, right? So when you have a lid over that and you have oil, you're getting almost no heat dissipation. So that's why this pond pump is here. The pond pump's gonna circulate the fluid while the fans up top will kind of help dissipate and get some fresh air inside of the actual casing or tank. And hopefully that'll work out well. Of course, we got some grills to cover the fans because we want to look a little professional like we kind of know what we're doing. And on top of that, we have lots of Loctite. We have two things of JB Weld in here because I don't plan on making a lot of holes, but if we need to, we want to be able to seal them up really well. Stainless steel hose clamps. We have a 75 millimeter hole saw. That'll be for the 80 mil fans. This right here is a drill bit set. I, for, I don't even remember why I ordered that. I ordered a drill bit set. Maybe I just wanted it. Drill bit. Yeah, drill bit set. Now, one thing that we have for this one that I did not do in the past is I normally got really cheap vinyl tubing, which seems to have worked in the past just fine so far, but I got this reinforced tubing that can handle a lot more PSI. It's PVC. It can also handle a little bit higher temperatures without warping as much. And that's going to be important because that pump right there, this is a lot bigger than we've ever used. I mean, I actually took it apart a little bit because I wanted to make it smaller. You guys can actually see the impeller too, which would be really cool. But this is a 85 watt pump that I think is I want to say like 3,000 gallon per hour. So it's, it's all going to move a lot, hopefully. Our last one was like a trickle. That was not enough. So hopefully this one absolutely just forces a ton of that mineral oil through our radiator so it actually cools the oil really well. I got rocks in my car. I forgot to order them, so they're in my car. Now, obviously, I got some fittings because this does not come with any fittings. And then lastly, we have the frame. There is a lot of planning that goes into this, guys. I mean, and this isn't even going to be it. Every time Matt and I do one of these, I still don't order enough parts somehow. And we always end up doing something slightly different. I don't even know how well all this is going to work. We've done this in the past. We got to remember, we only do about one of these a year. We're not experts on thermodynamics and stuff like that. Uh, this right here is basically a micro ATX test bench, which I wanted to kind of like change up our style because normally how we used to do this in the past is we'd literally set the motherboard in there. We'd kind of lean it a little bit and then I'd usually put two holes up top and then silicone them so that it didn't leak bad. But I'm like, hey, if I don't have to do any holes in the tank at all, that'd be awesome. So I found this acrylic holder, which obviously this peels off, it's actually clear and it's gonna have risers built in. So we can actually build our board onto this. And then my plan is to basically just glue this in to the back with just a few daubs of glue. So that then if we ever need to take the board out, we can actually get in there with our screwdriver and do that. But whenever we did it in the past, we literally screwed it in and then I siliconed it in forever. So if the board ever went bad or anything, kind of like, well, now we have to crack the acrylic to get it out. So yeah, what we're gonna go ahead and do is with these videos, it's a lot different than our traditional PC build. It's a lot of just planning and showing you guys along the way how this build's gonna go and it makes for a longer video so I hope you guys enjoy it but yeah we'll go ahead and just dive into some pre-planning here and make sure everything that we have is gonna work and then from there we'll just dive into it. So the plan as of right now is we're gonna put this board together we're basically just gonna build a PC pretty much I mean we're gonna put everything on here um, probably we should probably make sure it works I feel like normally we don't want to do that but we should probably yep. test bench it. If we're gonna submerge it in mineral oil I think it should work. Yeah because guys we've had to get in these mineral PCs in the past and it's not fun it's very warm it feels really awkward um, and then Matt's gonna kind of get started after getting the power supply and everything out on getting at least one of these strips in here. Now the idea for this is we're gonna have a few things that are gonna protrude a little bit, like maybe do about here. Like the graphics card comes to about here, the motherboard comes to about here. So ideally, I think we're gonna, at the least, this just snaps out, which just like that, I'm not, I don't wanna, I'm gonna hurt He's myself. gonna break it. Yeah, um, but the idea is we're probably just gonna lop like from here to maybe here off. And this little motherboard tray actually has these risers here, which should hold Those the graphics tall. card. Yeah, they should hold the graphics card um, in place so that then we actually have a sturdy build in the past. We've just had the graphics card just kind of hanging on by the PCI lane only, and that's not very safe. So starting out, like I said, we're pretty much just gonna be building a normal computer, and then we're gonna start getting into some of the modifications and stuff like that. So currently this is what we're looking at for the RGB setup. I was easily able to pop off this acrylic piece and then basically remove the uh, little RGB bar, the measly uh, six LEDs on that thing, which I already lost it. But uh, yeah, as you can tell, we got three Corsair RGB strips here. This one's gonna need a little bit of hot glue on each end here to make sure it doesn't fall in, but 
it, it, it's gonna be nice and bright. And Jackson's working on the acrylic panel over here. Uh, we've got the motherboard all put together with that nice Asus Toughen i310-100. And uh, so far we're making progress. So far so good. All right, guys, so uh, after a lunch break and after doing a BIOS update because we were like, oh, wow, this is a B660 with a 13 Gen i3. You know, it might work. We might just wing it, but it definitely needed a BIOS update. Yeah, definitely glad we did that because if you guys don't know, to update a BIOS on a cheaper board like this, you have to take the cooler off, put in a 12th gen CPU, put cooler back on, and yeah, then you have to swap it again. And that would have been covered in mineral <laughs> oil and it would have not been fun at all to have to do. We would have had to halfway ruin a processor where we would have had to clean it and probably delit it to get all the mineral oil out. But we avoided that by test benching at first. So now we got our pump mostly ready. I ended up actually putting some silicone in the threads on this so we don't have a bunch of our uh, fluid pressure leaking out. I'm gonna go ahead and put these on. I didn't even think about this, but I'm like, this will help a lot with the vibration because this pump is very big for just five gallons. It's just mineral oil is so viscous, it does not move like five gallons of water. So I definitely don't want this thing like vibrating the tank to death. So um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just continue on. We got the lid about quarter of the way done. We need to kind of figure out like the fans and um, you know, the radiator mounting and everything, but we already got the fans on the radiator too. So to give you guys an idea on that, we do need to put our fittings in, but that's gonna go on the lid like this. Our cables will kind of tuck under. We'll probably just have them go through one of these holes in the back and we'll probably mount our hubs like here and here or something like that, or maybe stack them on top of each other so that they're easily controllable and accessible. We better start drilling. Drilling power. We better get serious. It's gonna get brutal. <laughs> and very messy. Puncture. Damage! The holes are here, look at the holes. The holes are here. So we're trying to decide where we want to actually mount these fans and I just let the vacuum, it was leaning and it fell. Vacuum. Basically trying to decide right now between this, which obviously they'll hang off a little bit, but that's not a really big deal. This is definitely the simple route. I can just literally glue or screw these down and then we just put these little guys over it for safety and aesthetic purposes or we can do inside, which would definitely be cleaner. The only thing is it's gonna involve a lot of mod, like we'd have to cut all of this, which we do have a Dremel and it wouldn't be too terribly hard, but then we have the issue of it's gonna be very offset because of the sides of the fans. So we'd have to cut some of the fan to get it over enough. So I'm kind of just leaning, we put them on the top. Yeah. Won't be quite as clean, but hey, if we ever need to work on the fans or replace them or anything, it'd definitely be a heck of a lot easier. Power of hot glue. It's the power of hot glue. Um, with these ones, we can actually just screw them in now. Let's see what the finished product looks like. Look at that on the inside, looks extra cool now. Nice. So we got lots of ventilation. So now we just need to get these strips nice and uh, glued down so they don't go anywhere. We also need to figure out our, our hub situation. So we know these will be good for our fans. So yeah, we'll probably do the dual hub. You ever been on the dual hub? So I'd probably say hot glue this one down like this. Okay, so we got stuff uh, super glued, but we might be peeling some of it back up because uh, just logistically where things line up. <laughs> but so far we have the board inside the tank. This is it guys, that's all we gotta do. Just plop it in there and pour it around, we're good to go. But all jokes aside, we're getting everything set up to where we can actually mount this to the back of the case. And then from there, we're going to put this lid on and start making our final cuts for the IO and GPU, which also is IO, but GPU IO. Um, long story short, we're getting close. We're, we're about to the halfway mark, I would like to say. So right now we're just kind of putting a little small layer of hot glue just to kind of hold the board in place. We think this is where we're going to keep it, um, but obviously if we don't go super hard in the hot glue, we can still take this off and move it if need be. It's looking pretty good. We got the power supply. This time we mounted it above. Well, when I say mounted, it's just it's sitting It's mounted. Here. What do you mean? Yeah, it's mounted, but it's sitting above the actual pump this time. So I'm hoping that that kind of saves us some room and it looks definitely looks a lot cleaner. We don't have the power supply sitting in front of the computer like we normally do. Right now I'm just stealing a, basically this is like a front panel for like a Prodigy case. So I just took, I think it was the reset switch. Doesn't really matter what it is. It's basically just a monetary switch. Just like that. Cookie clicker. Yeah, cookie clicker. And um, I'm hoping that I can get it mounted. Yeah, there's a little hole right here. Regardless, this already looks way cleaner than how we'd normally do it. And if we can find the little rubber dome, we can hot glue that over. And then we got a really dope switch that actually uh -huh. looks, looks like it's meant to be there, so. All right, so we were just testing to make sure all the RGB is working. And we're just gonna go with like 
RGB RGB uh, because we had a little bit of an issue figuring out what we're gonna do with all the USB headers to get everything to be like software control, which is fine. I mean, we love our rainbow RGB mm -hmm. puke. Yeah, so if we just tuck these, then we don't have to run them all the way to the bottom of the freaking board. We can have almost everything just on the lid besides the reset switch. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're moving the hubs um, to another side because we have to cut a lot of this off to actually be able to access the IO. Really didn't think that through, but as Jackson mentioned, maybe the cows are flashed back to it. We end up like changing our mind throughout this entire process. Yeah, it's probably gonna change a lot more. It's gonna change again. <laughs> so we got a lot of cutting to do. So right now, it's definitely more than I wanted to do or thought we have to do, but we're gonna have to basically cut um, all of this, we're gonna have to move this fan back just a little bit more because we, the grab thread is really tall. I did not realize it was gonna be this tall. Come over here, cut this and this. We're not gonna have a ton of the lid left, which kind of leaves us with this problem. Originally, we were gonna have this nice and pretty uh, kind of mounted like this. But now I think I'm gonna have to basically fabricate a mount that'll come up a little bit so that we can still get to the graphics card and this doesn't just literally sit on top of the graphics card. So I'm thinking we'll use some of these holes in the back. Maybe I'll just literally buy two aluminum L brackets or weld some together, have it come down and then boom, it'll mount. We'll super glue it or screw it in just like this. So I think that'll work. Welcome to the trash. Let's start cutting it. All right, so. Impressive. Guys, we're cutting a knock to a fan. <laughs> Forgive us. Alrighty, we had to do some very naughty things that you saw on camera, but uh, basically we have the lid, which is now, you know, <laughs> kind of a hat for this uh, setup here, um, all cut out so we have access to our GPU. Uh, we have our IO on our motherboard um, and all the power cords and tubage can run out of there nice and easy. We did have to modify this Noctua fan <laughs> a little bit <laughs> um, because of, uh, well, you can kind of see we needed room to be able to mount this a little bit more flush and uh, keep things nice and uniform. It's not the best intake outtake setup, but it's just kind of supplementary. It's just supposed to help out a little bit more than just um, all that hot oil building up and uh, just relying on that pump system. It fits. <laughs> it fits. So it's been about a day or so and uh, we've done some modifications. Yeah, so I, uh, I I got a little fancy and tried welding aluminum. I didn't do a great job, but yeah, we TIG welded some aluminum brackets and they go like that. And the reason why we have it raised like this is because our graphics card that sits here needs to be able to still be plugged into. So we have the radiator to where it'll be about here so that we can still plug in our ports and everything. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and mount this radiator to these little brackets that we have made and at that point, we should be getting close to the finish line Very close. and ready to fill her up. Woo! Back with the hot glue, trying to secure everything because yeah, we don't want the uh, RGB strip to like over time just well, fall and uh, lay in the mineral oil because <laughs> that'd be bad. Guys, we have the radiator mounted with our favorite tool, hot glue. <laughs> hot glue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, we thought about drilling it, but I was like, well, if this holds, like, what's the point? What's it's the actually point? pretty sturdy. It looks pretty sturdy. But yeah, um, the game plan is to take this tube, this tube right here, it'll focus. Tube buffer. This tube, go into the top spot right here, and then we're gonna have another tube coming out here that goes back into the tank, and we have ourselves a mineral oil loop. There goes my glue. <laughs> As Jackson finishes super gluing everything oh. down. All right, we're getting our feed line in. I figured I'd just do the top so that gravity kind of does, you know, some of the work. Uh, so the other line will come off this fitting here and it will go back into the tank. Should be pretty straightforward. And then after that, I think we're just gonna do like a little bit of cable management. I think we're gonna start pouring. Pour, baby, pour. Because when it rains, it mineral oils. Hey guys, look at that. It's done, finished, finished build. Just kidding. <laughs> um, so what we gotta do is put some rock in now. Um, to fill in some of the bottom. It'll really make things look nice and cool. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to do that. And uh, let's go to lift this back up. And yeah, I think we can just kind of, uh, so I'll, I can just kind of lift it uh, forwards. I should probably turn the thing off because yes. I have a small fear of a rock frying in a fan it, and it breaking it. It could hit it. a fan. That is very, very possible. Put it back down. She's been rocked. All right, guys, it's time. It's time for us to fill the PC with mineral oil. It's time oil. to get devious.
Now we're at the point now where we're gonna let it run. Um, it's ready to benchmark. We'll get some games going on it, obviously. We wanna see what the temperatures and everything end up looking like, but. Um, we're definitely moving a lot more fluid than the last one. The last one, our tubes actually had a bunch of air pockets in them, and we we were pretty much getting like a light trickle coming out of it. This one is is pretty full as far as the fluid movement goes, so. I have a lot more faith in this one actually being cool. Plus these fans right here, and we have a 360 instead of a 240. Like I, I think I think we're gonna be golden on temps for once. So yeah, we're gonna see what this ARC A750 and i3 can do in some games. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right guys, we're on our first test and we're playing Sons of the Forest. We are currently at, uh, let's see, 1080p. We're on, make sure we're on, I was about, are we actually at 1920? We're actually at 1920, uh, v-sync disabled. We're on low settings because we tried like doing like high and um, I mean it's playable but we're getting more like 35 ish FPS with this way we're getting like 60 plus now this game is in beta at the time of testing it so keep that in mind but yes yeah, so this is the very first demonstration that you guys are going to see where it's kind of obvious mineral oil as we mentioned beginning of the video is not like water in a way where it's very easy and very good to cool stuff um that gpu is running at like 82c i'd imagine in all honesty on air it'll probably run a bit cooler than that um so this is one of the first times we we're just kind of looking at like hey mineral oil you know it's so as you can see the temperature of the gpu are running a little bit warmer than they probably should have even on air i'd imagine this gpu would be we're probably doing a little bit better than this. Um, mineral oil is just not a amazing coolant. Um, it may seem like, oh, submerge something in liquid and it'll stay nice and cool. Well, not always the case because you can see from our floor camera, the heat is building up a little bit inside the actual mineral oil and not getting dissipated as much as it needs to. But uh, regardless, you can feel to the touch that this is getting a little bit warm um, and we pretty much got like the best pump we can get for this, uh, this little fish tank because for the most part, uh, we're maxing out the size of this thing maybe with like a ridiculous pump in a bigger fish tank you might be able to move stuff but mineral oil is so viscous it's really hard to push it through the pump that well the temperatures are what they are yeah we, we could definitely see some cooler temps with just more oil uh more fans i mean more everything really but obviously we wanted this to be you know realistic and like this thing with the micro atx board is about the size of like a micro atx case so you know, if you guys want to experiment at home, feel free. Feel free to dip all your stuff in mineral oil. All right, guys, we are in Call of Duty Warzone 2.0 playing some Resurgence, and this is a game that's really pushing the CPU and GPU to its limits. Um, and as you can tell, temperatures are staying about the same. Uh, the main issue, again, long term, is just seeing how this uh, mineral oil like works in terms of how warm it gets uh, with stuff running like max speed because the oil can retain heat and stuff will get a little bit toasty. But so far, it's 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 usable. It's not point where we're like oh god we gotta shut this thing off so yeah we're seeing um i think about the highest temperature in the gp we're 84 c 83 uh but it does fluctuate a lot so it seems like like right now it's at 79 it actually went down our cpu has definitely hit an all-time high of about 65 but it's kind of sticking between like 60 and 65 our oil uh was just that like i think uh yeah our max temp was 33 and now we're at 32 so it seems like it's, you know, for the most part stable. We've been running the PC now gaming for, I'd probably guess about 10 minutes total. Now we'll probably have this run be a little bit longer, I'm sure, than the forest was. So we'll probably get a more um, accurate temperature. Without headphones. I got that guy. You don't even need them. We are running, by the way, uh, a latest uh, driver version for Intel Arc, which they're making a lot of updates to these GPUs over time. Drivers are really gonna make these cars perform even better. And at the price point, the A750 is still a really good card. Uh, has enough VRAM to stretch into 1440p if you want to. Um, and yeah, I think it's a very capable GPU now, especially with the driver updates. But yeah, 250 bucks, you know, eight gigs of VRAM, PCI Gen 4. Um, you're really getting a card that's very similar. Dang, you just fried whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, that's trying to find you. No! Oh, he hit one more shot. Crawl away, crawl away. So it looks like the oil, we're at 32.7. And I think ah. we've hit a max of about 34. So, so we've, we've gone up about a degree. <laughs> oh, God. I don't think I'm coming back now. No! <laughs> I'm done! 
But uh, yeah, I mean, the temperatures are running pretty solid. What we'll do, um, as we always do, is run some built-in benchmarks, cyberpunk and stuff, which will really stress this thing. And you'll all be able to see the final temperatures we're looking at. But obviously the A750 outside of this will probably be able to ramp up its fans and run much cooler. But hey, it's mineral oil. It's kind of cool. It's a cool proof of concept. Do we really recommend you at home do this? Probably not, unless you really want to just submerge our stuff in mineral oil. But it's still cool to see that we're actually able to get it to work and we have a very unique looking PC, so let's just wrap this video up and take a look at those built-in benchmarks. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking this mineral oil gaming PC. Yeah, a lot of quotations around that, but you know, it worked actually pretty well. I mean, we got some fairly high temps here and there, like on the GPU. CPU actually stayed pretty cool. I mean, well within the i3's operating range, but overall, I mean, I think it looks pretty cool and it performs pretty decent. We're not saying at all that you should do this at home. We don't even recommend business. We don't recommend anyone do this really, unless you really know what you're doing, because we barely even know what we're doing and it really shows. Yeah, this is something that we've been doing for years now and we've mainly done lower end systems. The most crazy thing we did before this was the 9590 and even then we're using like an RX 460 for the GPU. So we didn't go as crazy as this with the A750. And I think we've reached the limits of this tank. We've used this tank a couple of times. So uh, yeah, if we were to do this over again, we probably would get a little bit of a bigger tank, uh, maybe mess with the pump again, but really the pump is kind of as high as it can really go. I mean, there are some other options out there, but they're huge. So I don't know. This is kind of what we ended up with. And I think for the sake of the video, it was entertaining for you guys. And if you want to shop around for stuff for mineral oil PCs, Again, we do not recommend it. Check the links in the description down below. They will be affiliate links that will help us out. Let us know what you think of this bad boy and what you think of the performance. So overall, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty bros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Now this mineral oil PC will actually be hopefully replacing our mineral oil PC that is already up front at PC Bros. You can actually come in, try a racing simulator that took the PC for free. And we also have over eight arcade games you can play for free as well. It's a really fun place. PC Bros. Tech, we sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and so much more online and in person. As Jackson mentioned, if you use code TOSTYBROS2 on checkout, you'll save 2% on your next purchase. See you guys later, goodbye.